So I'll tell you a little bit about him for those who are, don't know. Jose was born in Mexico City. He was raised in Tijuana, Mexico. At the age of 21, he came to live in the United States with his father, Don Miguel Ruiz. And through the masterful guidance of his teachers, including his mother, his father, and his grandmother, Sarita, and several other Nugaus, I said that right again, <laughs> which are shaman in his tradition, Jose came to silent knowledge, witnessing the world as it is without any story. Like his father, Don Jose Ruiz, he combines new insights with ancient Toltec wisdom and dedicates his life to sharing what he has learned by translating it into practical everyday life concepts that promote truth, love, and common sense. So we're all one, right? So we welcome you and thank you for your words today. Thank you, everybody. It's great to be back home at Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. And oh my God, it's just shining, and the heart's just shining, you know. Love, free soul, and rock and roll, you know. <laughs> and this is what we have to do in life. This is what we're meant to do in life, you know, to open our heart and let it guide us because the heart is the one that guides us. And this is what, in the tradition of the Nahual, the shamanism, is all about, is to follow your heart, you know. Follow your light. Your light will guide you. Your light will illuminate you when you arrive to your cave with awareness. And of course, the ancestors call the cave the mind. So when you come to the cave with awareness, you're bringing that light. And with awareness, you will completely learn to see. Learn to see what? The beauty that it is all around. The beauty that we feel. And no longer we will support the dream of negativity. Because the dream of negativity taught us to put attention to what? To the negative. And even though we see a hundred beautiful roses, and there's one that somebody calls an ugly rose, but I don't know if there's an ugly rose. <laughs> All the attention goes and put attention to the negative stuff. Even when we are with friends, you know, the gossip begins and, you know, and the gossip and the hatred and all that, it's like negative. So when that hits our emotion, you know, it's like eating our soul a little bit. And when we know that this domestication that was given to us, you know, some dom negative domestication because there's positive domestication, but the negative one that doesn't make us be free, the one that makes us punish ourselves a hundred times for the same mistake, well, that is full of darkness in our mind, in our cave. But when we open our heart and we make an act of power, we say with the word, we will change our life. And I believe in prophet, but the prophet that prophet is his own dream. Not what prophet is outside. The one that prophet is what is going to do. So if I'm living in suffering, I have prophesied that in one year or less, I will not live in suffering anymore because I will do everything in my power. I will not wait for anything outside. It is a decision to be made. And I remember my brother speaking about an interview he see about Oprah Winfrey and Robert Downey Jr. And Oprah Winfrey asked Robert Downey Jr., how difficult was it to leave your addictions? And he responded, it was very easy. And then Oprah responded, how can you say that when you went to like 20 different rehabs? <laughs> <laughs> and Robert Downey responded, simple, because all those 19 other times, I went for somebody else. But when I went for myself, it was easy. Because when you want freedom, for yourself, nothing's going to stop you. When you want freedom for your children, Mama Jaguar doesn't stop until those cops get the freedom. And exactly, our human body, it is a little cop. It is the vehicle that was lent to us so we can communicate to one another. So the intent, the force, the life force that carries us can communicate and perceive everything it is. So when we wake up, it is like resurrecting. And I believe in resurrection, but resurrection in the same life. Because once we were little, we got domesticated, and we got you know, punished, and we feel the negativity. It put us to sleep. But then little by little, something touches our heart, like an eggshell getting penetrated to see the light inside the egg. And then we see the light within. And then like a seed on the ground, 
we look for the light and we begin to what to grow. Our awareness begins to grow, that it breaks from the underworld, from the underground, and finally, the seed has become to the light. And then it grows and grows, becomes thorns to protect itself. And then when the petals begin to blossom, it throws an aroma. And it's when a heart begins to blossom, it is an aroma. It is a presence. So you right away can identify the presence of positivity and the presence of negativity. And especially, it makes you aware what kind of language are we speaking. And I'm not talking about Spanish, English, or Spanglish, no. <laughs> I'm talking about negativity to positivity. The language of negativity makes us live a negative world. Oh, poor me. It's always my, poor me. I, I cannot succeed. But the positive say, okay, I was stuck once in this belief system that I couldn't do it. Now I'm going to be skeptical of my own negativity. Every time I say I cannot do it, that means to take action. Like, sometimes I remember waking up and I have to work out. Don't have to, but I want to work out. That's my intent. And then I begin hearing a voice in my head. Well, not today. Maybe just 30 minutes in bed. Just stay. Don't go. But the moment that I begin hearing that, it's an act of power that needs to be done. And when I mean act of power, when I hear that, it means that I have to get up and not put attention to the voice because if I let my life be run by this wild horse that is afraid of everything, where would I be? Like, I want to be with my loved one, but the horse is taking me somewhere else. I have to learn to tame the horse, tame my emotions, to put attention and learn to listen. What are the emotions telling me? Am I afraid? Am I nervous? And when I feel that, what am I going to do? I remember one time when I was having a difficult time, you know, I was having a dark time, you know, I was feeling sorry for myself. I didn't want to go out in life. Um, one of my best friends had passed away, and I was just like, and my father came to me and said, okay, I want you to come with me. So we went to Mexico, to Oaxaca, and we were in front of a cathedral. And he said to me, okay, son, it's time to be in your heart. I want you to feel your emotions. And when you get into that cathedral, you will not leave that cathedral until you speak to an angel. And then I said to myself, oh, I'm going to be here forever. <laughs> so I entered, I sat down, and I prayed the way that I was taught to pray. Without any responsibility, just ask, ask, ask. Even though I'm not meaning it, ask, 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 ask. Please resolve this for me. Please resolve this for me. Please, please, you do it. And, you know, and I was really into it. You know, I was believing that. And then, you know, I closed my eyes and somebody tapped me in my shoulder. As I opened my eyes, I turned around and it was this beautiful, beautiful lady. And she said to me, if you pray, the angel will listen. And then she walked away. And I'm like, well, why is this? How rude. You know, she's interrupting me. You know, <laughs> what, what does she mean? You know, but then I continue to pray. But then all of a sudden, I begin thinking of my friend who passed away. And then the prayer changed. I said to my friend, Juan Carlos, your death is not in vain. You know, it could have been me. I could have been in the car with you. Miracle happened that Father came and took me that weekend to go with him. But I know your death is not in vain because you woke in part of me up. And I know that you will always be there guiding me. Now it's time to stand up and enjoy this life and learn how to enjoy it. And then I begin praying, I will use this intent and I will change my life. And then I stopped myself and said, oh my God, I'm saying the prayer and I'm listening to the prayer. The lady said, if I pray, the angel will listen. So when I'm praying inside my thinking mind, I'm praying and I'm listening to my own prayer. I got it. The guardian angel that they talked to me since I was a kid wasn't outside of me. It was always within me. It was always me. So when I was doing a prayer, I was listening. 
And I got so excited that I can leave the cathedral church now. <laughs> but as I was walking out, something stopped me, this beautiful painting of the Virgin of Guadalupe, a symbol of the mother. And her body represents the emotion. The interaction between her and life is the aura around her, the pointy little sun. Whatever happens outside, she will feel, and whatever she feels, the world will feel. And there is the special symbol that I really took in. Underneath her, there's a moon plate that an angel is holding. So in that moment, I knew that the body of the mother is the body of the humanity, the one that feels the emotion and everything. But the one little angel holding the mother is the mind, is the power of the mind, the one who's in control of the mind, the one who tames the wild horse. And if the little angel is afraid of what the mother's feeling and wants to fly away, what's going to happen to mother? It's going to fall. The service of the mind of the little angel is to protect heaven and to protect the mother. And you know, our mind protects us from ourselves. And that's the prayer that I do every day. My life protects me from myself. And then I know the meaning of my life. And the meaning of my life is to take care of Jose. Because I know what makes Jose happy, and I know what makes Jose suffer. And how do I know this? It's because I am Jose. <laughs> like you are you. You know exactly what's going on within you. And when you talk with honesty, and with the discipline, and the willingness to change your life, it is possible. And what can serve us? Like, what can serve me? I say to myself, well, to be skeptical. Not skeptical in a social position that I'm more intelligent than anybody else that I don't listen. No, nothing about that. I'm skeptical of my own negativity. I'm breaking the cycle. I'm breaking the habit. And those habits, they're still waiting for us. They don't go anywhere. <laughs> they're waiting for us to give it life. Like the sun gives life. The heart, the sun, gives life too. So wherever we put our attention, that is what we're going to perceive. So if we put our attention to the world of negativity, our world is negative. It's like, you know, eating rotten food and having a bad night's sleep because bad case of, you know, <laughs> stomach pain. And then you get those leftover food and you go to your best friend the next day and you say, why is this happening to me when you're still eating it? <laughs> and what we're eating is poison knowledge, poison stories that we put into our system, belief system that is not necessary for us. You know, sometimes we take some other people's pain, and this is what it means that magic exists. You know, the spells exist, and it's not with, you know, hocus pocus of that, no. The magic is the power of the word, because with the word, you can break a spirit, and with the word, you can motivate a spirit. How are we using the word? And are we putting spells on ourselves? Are we putting curses on ourselves? This is why when we wake up, it's like the snake that shed its skin. And we're going to let that skin behind us and go forward. Because one thing, I remember I was a collector. And I know if I was a snake and they see me coming, they will see a big mountain coming because I will be carrying all my dead skins. And every time somebody speaks to me about certain kind of pain, I say, oh, hold on a minute. Let me put skin number 67, the one about heartbreak. And I will no longer listen to you. I will listen to my own story again and hurt myself again and again. You know, we pay a hundred times for the same mistake because we are addicted to suffering. You know, there's normal pain when some loved one leaves us and when in a relationship, that's normal pain. But there is the pain that is not natural, the pain that we use to hurt ourselves. We create stories. And this is born since we were kids looking for attention, doing tantrum. Then we grew up teenagers, more tantrum. The 20s, we mastering tantrum. The 40s, you know, is silent knowledge tantrum. You know? And if you notice in the soap operas, there's always the silent knowledge tantrum that creates distortion all over the, pro the, the houses and the families. And it uses lies. That's why people are afraid to communicate. And that's why there's a lot of assumptions in this world. Because they're afraid to communicate. 
But the moment that you're not afraid to communicate any longer, you're not afraid to speak your voice. You know, in this life we have a hundred years of vacation. You know, how are we going to live that? How are we going to spend our vacation? This is when we get awareness that the illusion is judgment. Because judgment exists before we're born, when we are alive and after we're dead. Knowing that, are we going to put that in our life? No. We are aware. And this is what my father was trying to explain to me one day. He said to me, son, imagine being in a room where everybody is completely drunk and you're the only sober person. Why try to communicate? They will forget the next day. Why waste your time debating? There's no point. You just watch and see. And even though you see many different levels of awareness, you know, you wake up and you can see how we corrupt ourselves with lies, with ego. Because we all are made equally. We all are the same. No. There's not need to put someone in a pedestal and say we can never attend what this person has. You know? But we really don't know these persons. But we really do know ourselves. So when we begin listening with a sacred heart, we will no longer want to lie to ourselves. We want to be free. Free of our own judgment. That's why I say, may life protect us from ourselves. Here we are now to change our world, you know. And it's a decision. It's a decision. And we make that decision. It's because we make it with self-respect. Just imagine respecting yourself completely. That you don't allow the language of negativity to be in your presence. And sometimes... We are with some presence, but, you know, it's because we are there to support somebody. But we don't believe it anymore. And when we practice, that's what creates a master. We are here to be free. So if you imagine there's a little bird outside this room singing, <laughs> do you think the bird is thinking, I hope I'm singing in the right key? I hope they like me inside that room? No, the bird just does what it does. It sings. So why do we do that to ourselves? Oh, I hope they like our art. I hope they like these books that I write. Oh, I hope... No. When our art touches us, that's it. When we speak the truth, the village will rise and feel... We feel the truth too. And the truth is being heard right now around the globe. And we're part of the change. My grandmother said before she passed away, she said, son, I'm so happy that you are in this time because you're going to witness a change. These biblical times that no one are watching because everybody is pulling their problems. Everybody's putting in negativity, but I see positivity. And she petted me, and she pulled my hair. She's my little Indian boy. <laughs> you know, those people who have touched our hearts are not here anymore. They're guiding us. They're supporting us, and that makes them eternal. And one day we will be eternal too. This physical body is lent to us. The real us is what moves this physical body. It's intent. That's why in the Totec tradition, we know that the physical death is just part of life too. There's nothing to fear. Because to fear death is to fear life. When you're not afraid to live life, you're not afraid to go home. Because you see the gift is to be alive. Now, what are we going to use to not enjoy our vacation? What stories are we going to make up to not enjoy the vacation? And remember, we, in our heart, have a message that gets translated into the mind, and then we speak it out in our words. We all are messengers, but the question it is, what kind of messengers are we? What is the message that we give to the people we say we love with all our heart and to ourselves? Sometimes we say to people, I love you with all my heart, but I love you if you do what I do. <laughs> manipulation. No one can manipulate us if we don't manipulate ourselves. If we stand with respect, that's what the shaman do. There's nothing magical about the shaman. They just live in respect. And you know when somebody human doesn't support gossip or negativity all that, the one who supports gossip and talks it is afraid and nervous to talk to somebody like that because he sees the light, 
So if we talk that way in our automatic life, let the light come. Let the word be impeccable that we speak. And we will begin thinking impeccable that the word becomes the light because we purify it. Like I love to hear, first was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and God represents creation. When do we use creation against ourselves? It's time to stop the word of the gods. And the word of the gods is made by the world belief. My way is better than your way. No. Everything is better. Everything is good. Everything is helpful. And when we understand that, we understand many levels of awarenesses that we can shape shift our knowledge in order to speak to somebody. We don't have to project and push what we know. We have to have respect. Because just imagine, we get invited to an art gallery. And instead of taking a camera or some spare change to buy some art, we take our own painting supplies. <laughs> we walk into the gallery and say, oh, this needs to be like this. Yeah. This needs to be like that. Yeah. What's going to happen? Security is going to come and take you out. And then it says, oh, how rude. And then you go to another art gallery and do the same thing. And the same thing to another one. And then one says, why is this always happening to me? Why do they always do that? You know, and then it says, maybe it has to do something with me. And that's how we break programs. But how do we do it? By being honest. You know, we're perfect with the mistakes that we have done, that are doing, and that we will do. Because with those mistakes, we learn. And to ask to forgiveness is to not repeat those mistakes again. That's real forgiveness. You don't even have to say, somebody forgive me if they don't want to talk to you. Just learn the lesson and not do it again. Because sometimes people, they're gift, the greatest gift to us. And we have to understand, you know, that it's the heart. That's what matters. Not what sees because sometimes people are, you know, in pain and they say things they do not mean. That's why forgiveness is very liberating. And to forgive ourselves is the most liberating thing that lets the ego fly free. And just know, when the ego's flying free out of the cage that is inside of you, the ego's not on parole. You're free to enjoy your journey. And this journey is the gift that was given to us, life itself. And from this point on, let's make our life a masterpiece of art. What excuse do we have? None. Let's give our loved ones the best gift. Let's give them our open heart. And let's change this dream by changing our own world. And in gratitude, we go and share this beautiful message that is all that we are. So I'm so happy to get this opportunity to speak with you, to share my heart. And I know we all work with the same boss, for the same boss. And we'll deliver our message and live in gratitude. And we don't say goodbye. Because in the Totec tradition, you know we meet in the sky like the eagles. Thank you, everybody, for your love. So it's our time for prayer. I invite our practitioners to come forward. And as we gently turn within... As we turn within, we go into that space that is vast, that is wide, that is the light and the brilliance of the one. For there is only that one life, that one life that is the creator, the divine infinite wisdom, that thing I call God, that has created everything out of itself from that perfection. It is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent in everything, every way. Creating this planet, everybody on it, this universe, into the beauty and the good that it is. Each individual, each individual, each everything that is created carries that divine knowing and that God particle and that essence and that life and that power to create the life that they desire, to create and understand a perception of what's around them. 
Each individual has the power to go within and recognize their wholeness, their love, their light. Because it is that one mind that expresses in, as, and through me and every individual in this room. What we focus on expands. What we create in mind and thought can be changed and healed in mind and thought. Whatever story we were given in the beginning that told us we were something different and less than whole only expands if we focus on it. When the time is right, when we do it for ourselves, when we recognize that that negativity no longer serves us, we let it go. We become impeccable with our word. We let it root and ground in the being that we are and in that good and let our life flourish and let our life grow. I claim the good of that. I claim the truth of that, knowing that every heart in this room goes from this today, expanding that good, that knowing that they are to allow their life to be everything they choose to be. how good that is. I bless each individual in this space. Bless the word of Jose in that message today, the music, and knowing that it carries forth. There is a great blessing for every minister, every rabbi, every good, every word of God that expands, bringing this world and this place to a higher level. Yes, there's a good that's happening that's invisible to those who don't want to see it, but it still is real, and it is good, and it expands. And we claim it right here today, for as one knows it, everyone else lives around that, and how good that is. And so knowing the blessing of this, I release this into the law, and I declare it so, letting the world grow. We take that in, and together we say, and so it is.